my assistant is back. And it's perfect timing because in this buoyant force video, there's going to be two separate objects that we have to draw free body diagrams for. So I think she knew that and is coming to help out, or at least coming to observe. Or leave. <laughs> All right, so in this buoyant force example, uh, we have a helium balloon that um, is holding up some amount of mass. So our goal is to figure out the total amount of mass that can be held up by the helium in the balloon. So the problem is going to start the way that all of our problems do, with a picture of here's our balloon and here's our load mass. And the key thing that we want to recognize is that with two separate objects, we need two separate free body diagrams. So the free body diagram of the balloon we have the weight of the helium. So the mass of helium in the balloon times G. So the actual material inside the balloon, the gas. We have the fact that this rope is attached here, so there's a tension down. And we have the buoyant force. Because this is a gas in air, the surrounding air, the buoyant force does matter to us. So we have a buoyant force up on the helium. Okay, and then the free body diagram of the mass, of the load mass, we have the rope attached here pulling upwards, tension, and we have the weight of the load mass, so the mass that we're looking for, m, times g. Now, in this problem, this bottom free body diagram is, is simple to, um, to explain. In both cases here, the net force equals zero, but that means that the tension here minus the load mass times G is equal to zero, and so the tension is going to equal the load mass. But one thing I want to point out to us, because this is really important when we're trying to do tougher problems or different problems um, in assignments or assessments. If this thing is underwater, if this were underwater, we would have a buoyant force as well acting on it. And we would have to include that force and this would not be a true statement anymore. So be very careful when you are doing um, problems that look similar to the examples that we do in these videos because it doesn't necessarily mean that they are identical. So keep that in mind if we have a small change, we want to be able to handle different problems using the same structure, the same format that we've been practicing. Okay, so that means that if the tension is equal to gravity here, then we know that this tension is equal to the load mass, which is different than the helium mass, times g. So in the force uh, free body diagram of the balloon, the net force is also zero for the balloon. And so we have the buoyant force up minus the tension minus the weight of gravity of the balloon, and that equals zero. All right, and so out here at the bottom, and I'm gonna put it all the way up at the top right after this, the buoyant force here is the density of the air, it's the surrounding fluid, so there's air out here, times the volume of the balloon, the volume of helium, times G. Tension, we determined, was the unknown mass that we're looking for, times G. And the force of gravity on the balloon is the mass of helium, a different mass, times G, and all of that equals zero. So I'm going to bring that all the way up to the top, but to do that I'm going to have to erase the free body diagrams. So I want to make sure and take a moment so that we understand what we did here. The balloon, because it is not a solid object, it has a buoyant force that is really important in this situation. 
It has a rope attached to it, and it has the weight of the material in the balloon itself. And the load mass, because it is a solid object in air, we don't worry about the buoyant force down here for this particular example, but there is tension and gravity, and because there's only those two forces in opposite directions, they balance each other. And so we just wrote down what forces we have, and I'm going to bring this back up to the top here, but it means I'm going to have to erase what we've gotten up until now. Okay. So what we have at the bottom is that the density of the air times the volume of the helium times G, 9.8, minus the load mass times G, 9.8, minus the mass of helium times G, which is 9.8. Okay, so first of all, just to make things slightly simpler for us, math-wise, we notice that because we have gravity in every single term, this is the first time that we've actively done this, but it's, it's worth recognizing that, we, um, that we're doing this just to simplify things for us. We can divide the entire left and right side by that 9.8 value, just so that things look a little bit simpler. So the density of air, times the volume of helium, the G cancels, minus the mass that we are attaching. I'm going to start to write load just so we don't lose track of what that mass is. The G cancels with that. Minus the mass of helium, and the G cancels as well. And all of that equals zero because zero divided by 9.8 is still zero. So here we are at this point in the problem it looks like we still have a lot of unknowns. But we go back to the um, wording of the problem itself, and we notice something important here. We have a number value that we have not yet used. We have that for this balloon, the radius is 70 centimeters. Okay, that's 0 0.7 meters. And that means that we can get the volume of the helium in that balloon. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, which means that for this balloon, 4 thirds times pi times 0 0.7 cubed, we will get a value. So that is no longer an unknown for us. So we get 1.44 cubic meters, and so that one, that's a check. The air we have on our, um, on our slide here that the density of air is 1.29, we're just going to call it cold air, 1.29 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. So we've got both of those now. This we know is our kind of official unknown. That's the one that uh, we're going to be solving for. But it means that we should have enough information to get the mass of helium. And this is where, just like in the previous two problems, we have to remind ourselves that we have density is mass over volume for any object. So that also is true for helium. The mass of helium is comparable to the volume of helium. So if we multiply both sides down here by volume, we have that the density of helium, 0 0.179, times the volume that we just found, 1.44, that will be equal to the mass of helium. And so the mass of helium that we have in our balloon is 0 0.257, 0 0.257 kilograms. But now that means that we have that number as well. So let's plug in what we have so far. The density of air is 1.29. The volume of helium down here was 1.44. The load mass is unknown still. And then the mass of helium way down here at the bottom is 0.257. All right, so I'm going to add the load mass to both sides so that we get it by itself, because that's the thing we are now solving for. 
So the mass that we're looking for is 1.29 times 1.44. minus 0 0.257. So we take, um, oops, doesn't help if I erase what I uh, care about calculating. All right, and so we get 1.6 kilograms for that mass, or 1.60. So we note here that this is the second board of, of content, right? But up here at the top, that was the kind of standard equation that came um, from our forces um, that matches a very similar setup to the previous, um, the previous example, where there were two weights downwards and the um, buoyant force balancing both of those. The previous example with the person standing on an, uh, an ice block looks like a drastically different situation, but it is the same overall structure of one force up and two forces down. We're gonna see problems where there's two forces up and one force down. Um, we have already seen that in the first example that we did. Um, and so it's just kind of recognizing that we look at what forces exist. We aren't trying to guess at what forces there are just because we had one example look this way and another example look the other way. So this mass here, 1.6 kilograms, is how much that one balloon would be able to hold. Okay. As always, you can um, rewind and, and refresh, uh, uh, replay the video if you need to. Um, and the other thing that I want to note for this video before we, before we end it uh, is the fact that that result that we got, a little bit over 1.5 kilograms, doesn't seem very big. Uh, but one thing that we commented on in the lecture uh, is that any time that we double the size of this helium balloon side to side, we are multiplying the volume by 8. And so it doesn't actually take all that much to be able to get to a size balloon that can carry several people's worth of, of mass. So kind of interesting. The slides also talk a little bit about zeppelins and blimps. So we've got one example left um, in this format, example videos from chapter 11, and it is also a buoyant force problem. And so I will see you in that video.